Hi there, it's Jennifer, and today I'm here to do the third video in a series about preparing for emergencies. If you have not seen the other two, I will link those in the space below so you can check those out. In the first one, I kind of talk about what kinds of things to prepare for depending on the area where you live, some of the bigger sort of natural disaster kinds of things. And then in the second video, I went through a binder that I have that helps you to kind of think through some stuff you need to have around your house or um, just things you need to plan for in case of emergency. This is not about being a doomsday prepper. It's just about being ready for those things that are likely to happen um, around the house or in your area. So this is really a wrap up video, but I still wanna talk about some of those things that are were most likely to encounter and that, that are pretty easy to, um, to prepare for. So first of all, I think it's just important to have a good first aid kit or just um, a, a box or something in your house that has the supplies you need in case of an emergency, in case you cut your finger or um, in case someone gets stung by a bee and they happen to be allergic. And so we have a box, it's just in our master bathroom closet that has things like um, ace bandages, band-aids, first aid cream, um, rubbing alcohol, uh, peroxide. It has, what else do we have in there? Um, we do have Benadryl and you know all kinds of stuff, gauze, things like that. Now I'll tell you, there was one time when I was, I was making dinner, this was several years ago, and I was using a cheese grater. You guys probably know what's coming, right? And it was, I was, had a small piece of cheese and I was grating it and it kind of slipped out of my hand in this corner of my thumb, right on the knuckle, just literally got grated off. It wasn't even like you could flap skin over to stitch it up. It was gone. There was just this gaping hole. I, I, I don't even know how to describe it to you. It wasn't as big as a penny or a dime, but it was not too much smaller than that. It was this huge gaping hole. I usually am fine if something happens, I, I can just take care of it. But it sort of panicked me. And I just sat there, I, mean, I ran over to the sink and I was running my thumb underwater and it was just bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. And, and then um, I put some paper towel on top of it. My husband was at work um, still and I just sat there and I was like, I don't know what to do. 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 And that is so not like me. Um, to for responding to something like that but for some reason I don't know it was sort of like shock or something I guess but I called my husband and I just said I just shaved off this whole part of my thumb and I don't know what to do I mean if I go to urgent care they can't there's nothing to sew up what do I do and so he said just calm down go in the bathroom get some gauze and put it on there and just tape it on so I still have him on the phone and I, I said we don't have any gauze we don't have any gauze. I'm looking through our box of first aid stuff, you know, and a Band-Aid certainly wasn't going to take care of this thing because it was really bleeding. And um, so <laughs> I ended up, I had some um, like uh, um, panty liners <laughs> in there and I ended up taking panty li the gauze from the panty liner and, and rubbing, or rubbing it holding it on there, which, you know, should do the trick, right? And uh, I ended up wrapping that up, wrapping it up in that I have kept having to change it. And then my husband stopped at the store and got some gauze for, you know, on his way home. So it, I mean, it would have been really nice had we had a first aid box that was well supplied with everything we needed. So also the other thing to do is you may say, well, I, we have a first aid kit or we have a first aid box. But you know what, you need to go through because sometimes Band-Aids are old and they don't stick anymore. And sometimes packets of alcohol swabs and things like that are dried up because they've been there for so long. So it's really a good idea, maybe once a year or so, just to go through and make sure that everything, that everything is still in good condition and that you don't need to, to replace it, anything. And then also a good idea if you run out of something just to go get it so that your box always has what it needs in it. Um, another thing is um, keeping first aid kits in your car and that's another thing you have to check because I was going someplace last summer my husband said you should bring a, a first aid kit with you he hands me this thing he has he has his in a Nalgene bottle which is kind of a cool idea because you have a way of getting water or you know 
if you needed to rinse something off, you could pour water onto it. And it's all filled with first aid supplies. And I went through and like half the stuff was bad or old or whatever, so expired. So we replenished that. So it's a good idea to go through those things as well. When you're hiking or camping, just remember to bring stuff like that along with you. You can just make a modified version of your first aid kit with just a few things that you might need when, you know, when you're on your on your hike. We don't ever anticipate that somebody might get hurt, but it sure is nice to be prepared for that when something like that happens. So, so that would be the thing that I would say, just take care of that now, just have that stuff on hand. But the um, other thing that I was thinking about, and it's something that my husband and I need to do, and, and so, um, in fact, today, when he gets home, I will talk to him about this, um, is a lot of us don't have a plan for a house fire, which is probably one of the most common, really bad things that can happen to people, and it doesn't matter the, um, where you live, what part of the country or what part of the world you live in, people's houses catch on fire. So of course, keeping everything in good working order in your house is a, is a good step with that. But having a plan for what, what you're gonna do, even preparing your children, doing a practice drill with your kids if you need to do that. But you know, we live in a two-story house and we have never lived in a two-story house before. This is the first one. And so I was thinking through all this and I thought, you know, what, you know, we don't have any way of getting out of our house if there was a fire like that was in the hallway. And so it would be a really good idea for us to have one of those window ladders that hooks in there um, that you could use. And we also have a guest bedroom upstairs. And I thought, you know, we shouldn't just take care of ourselves, but we should also take care of our guests. So the plan is that we're gonna buy two of those ladders and keep them under the bed in the bedroom so that if in the event of something horrific like that, we would have something that we could use to get out of the house. I'm going to mention one more thing and you might think that I'm just a little crazy here. I'm not a person who is a worrier. I am not a person who thinks the bad things are always going to happen. I, I tend to think that everything's going to work out okay and most of the time things will work out okay. So I just think that a little preparation just helps you ease your mind and then you don't have to think about it. You just go on and live your happy little life and you don't have to worry about those kinds of things. But the last thing I wanted to talk about is, um, is it's not specifically cruise ships. You could be thinking about other things too, but um, a, a few years ago we went on a cruise and it was right after they were having all those problems with cruise ships. That one that got stuck out at sea for like five days and they were running out of food and, and everything. First of all, it was so interesting to listen to perspective on that because some people got a hold of their family members and were screaming and freaking out over everything that was happening. And then I heard an interview from this other lady who said, well, yeah, it was kind of inconvenient, but she was on the, on the cruise with some girlfriends and she said, we just stayed by the pool and, you know, just kind of enjoyed being in the sun and, you know, it wasn't so bad. So I think a lot of it is perspective. And I can see somebody going on a, on a cruise and they're expecting it to be this luxurious experience and then all of a sudden disaster strikes and, and it's not what, it, what was expected. Uh, but when, when we went on our cruise, it was two weeks after that happened and there actually had been a couple of things with cruise ships during that time. And we thought, well, I mean, we're not gonna cancel our cruise because Chances are that's not going to happen on our cruise. It was highly unlikely that it was going to happen, but it had happened and it made us think about what could we do to prepare a little bit just so that the experience wouldn't be quite so uncomfortable. And so what we did is we thought, well, first of all, let's just pack a couple of little tiny flashlights with us. So if there, there was no power on the ship that we would have a way to see, um, then we thought, um, we would also uh, just throw in some power bars and um, just so that if they're like what happened on that one ship, just so we would have access to some food in our room. And then we also, when we went down to the buffet um, for one of our meals, we just picked up a couple of pieces of fruit that we kept in our cabin and we ate towards the end of the of the cruise because obviously nothing happened. Um, and then uh, the last thing that we did 
is we brought some bottled water with us. Now, on the cruise line we went on, they allowed each person to bring, I think it's eight things of either soda or bottled water. And so we each brought bottled water with us. We, we are water drinkers, so. And then we made sure that any time a water bottle was emptied, because we would carry them with us, we'd take them on excursions and things like that, but any time we emptied a water bottle, we would fill it up again. So that way we always had, I don't think we brought 16 bottles of water, but we probably had 10. So, um, so we would always keep 10 bottles of water always filled in our room so that if, you know, in, in the event that something happened, we would have access to some fresh water. So, you know, it's not going to take care of everything, um, every problem that could happen on a trip, but it was a way of doing a few things that just made us feel like we were thinking ahead just in case something happened. Now, once again, like I said, it's not about living your life in fear. It's just kind of about thinking ahead a little bit to some things you might need. So as you're planning for upcoming trips or as you're thinking about some events that could happen around your house, um, just, you know, take a few extra minutes, make a trip to the store, buy a couple things that would be good to have on hand at your house. And I hope this series has been helpful to you. If you're interested in more videos from my channel, Busy Being Jen, I would just encourage you to hit that subscribe button. YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos to this channel. I do videos about organizational projects and makeup reviews, and I'm currently doing a series on uh, long distance walking. So you might want to join me for that. I hope I'll see you again on Busy Being Jen. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.